Hello folks, Brian Manzella. Today from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Tomorrow, who knows? Happy Thanksgiving everybody out there. Today's the day before Thanksgiving, 2006. And uh, I'm going to hit you a couple pitch shots here and see what you think about the two different versions here. Nice little shot. Went about 80 yards. Flew about 40, maybe 50. A little different. Very similar setup. To me, I think the first one was hitting. I think the second one was swinging. Now, what's hitting and swinging? Well, hitting. That's hitting. I'm, I'm, I have forced across the shaft. And you notice how that'll keep it up my left arm. Second one was swinging. Swinging is a lot like this fiddle drill. This is the fiddle drill. You pick up the club like this with two fingers of this hand, two fingers of this hand, and both thumbs. You put it on your shoulder. You fiddle, you tilt and fiddle, and then you figure out a way to just drag it down your shoulder, make a divot, and hit the ball. Well, that club is going to be way behind your hands at some point. It's going to catch your hand at some point. Well, it hadn't caught it yet, but it's forward leaning. That's what you want an impact. You make a divot in front of the ball. It's going to catch your hands at some point, and then it's going to pass. Ping uh, Karsten Manufacturing that makes Ping Golf Clubs. A few years ago when I was working on a book that I decided not to publish. Maybe I'll put some of that information in another book at some point. But there's a lot of good information that Ping sent me via video of the ping man ping man's just this big like iron barn type robot difference is ping man has a free wrist hinge so if you look at the backswing of the ping man <laughs> it looked like this because the wrist was free see only when that club got on that side of hands did you get what we would call wrist cock and then as the rotor pulled everything down as long as the club head was on this side of the hands you had wrist cock and then it started on it started to uncock when the weight got on this side well, the deal is, the, the, the rotor was moving, the pivot was moving, so it timed all of that real well. That's what I did on that second shot. I think there are advantages to both. I think that poor golfers who manipulate the club anyway, open on the backswing, all that stuff, I think those golfers will benefit from learning a procedure, a pattern, a set of swing components that incorporates some hitting elements because you you can learn to make the club work like a club and swinging once you've mastered those elements you may do a better job swing two different looking shots I might use both of them in a round of golf don't really know yet been experimenting with uh, a bunch of new stuff from my own personal game I think that when you're a golf teacher and you don't play golf for a living, you've got to be experimenting at all times. You've got to be listening to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that thinks they've got information. i never forget, I was at a PGA teaching summit, and uh, a golf pro wanted to talk to a very famous person. Let's say he won a couple U.S. Opens and he used to be a television commentator, and he's on a senior tour now. You figure it out. Anyway, he didn't pay two cents of attention to what this very well known or at least you know in the circles of people who know better uh, you know like myself that, that they have to know better that's how we get our information from the world of golf anyway this very smart teacher was talking to this US Open champ so-called expert about something and he didn't want to hear anything that guy had to say about Putting. We're talking about John Daly's putting stroke ball thing, something that he had commented on TV. This is years and years ago now. This is mid-90s. I'll listen. I'm thinking there was a porter walking by with a tray. I'd listen to that guy. If that guy says he's got something, I'm going to listen to him. We have a guy on my web forum, BrianManzell.com forward slash forum. His screen name, a lot of mosquitoes here in Patton Rouge, excuse me. Screen name Mandarin. He's a math guy, science guy. He knows physics. Learned a lot from him. Go buy a book called uh, Physics in Golf, uh, Theodore Jurgensen. There's a lot of books like that. 
five books by people that have something different to say. Mindy Blake had this, you know, different way to hit it. Figure it out. Search for the perfect swing. But most importantly, buy the golfing machine. Find yourself an authorized instructor and find out what your golf game can be if you work with a golfer, you know, hopefully teachers are golfers, if you work with an authorized instructor, a teaching professional who understands that there are options in the golf swing. There's three things you really need to do when you hit a golf ball. You gotta be able to control the club head. You gotta be hitting the ball on the way down. You gotta be able to control the club face. They should be square when the ball leaves. You gotta be able to control the club shaft and that's basically the path that club head makes through the ball and what angle it's on. That's the important things. That's the things you've got to get right. How you do them doesn't make a damn bit of difference if you do it like Lee Trevino or you do it like Hal Sutton or you do it like Brian Manzella or any of my teachers. Teachers that work for me like Michael Finney and Tom Bartlett or players that I've worked with over the years like David Toms. All of those people I've talked about all have very good swings, and none of those swings really look exactly alike, but they all produce the alignments that that club needs to have to hit the ball properly and shoot. If you can get it right, golf's a lot of fun. I'll see if I can hit a good one for you. I'll be honest, I'll tell you where this ball's going now. Reminds me of something here, the waggle. Someone asked me about the waggle on my site. So what is the waggle? The waggle is a rehearsal. The waggle is a rehearsal of a couple things. The difference between address hands, when your left wrist is bent, your right wrist is flat, and impact hands, when your right wrist is bent, your left wrist is flat. So you're rehearsing that. You're re rehearsing the loading. That's the that where you're going to put the pressure and how you're going to put the pressure. Remember I said you got hitting and swinging with different loading. So, you know, you, you you're rehearsing maybe what the left wrist action is in a backswing. People who, who basically keep the club face looking at the ball would waggle like this. People who would turn the club face to the plane, those people would waggle a little bit different. I, I've always thought the waggle was real important. You know, Ben Hogan said, you should have a different waggle for every shot. I'll give you an example. Let's say you had to hit a low hooking pitch shot because you had to run the ball through some grass and go underneath some low limbs. Low hooking, like chip pitch. I'm gonna waggle that club more closed. I've got a little of this throw I'm gonna need in the loading and unloading procedure this waggle. So I'm gonna get this all right in my head and that rehearsal is gonna help the heck out of me hit this low running shot. If I was gonna hit a high, cut shot with a little club shaft layback like this. Maybe I would do it with a wedge normally, but here I'm doing it with the seven iron. Try to flip it over a bunker, let's say. I've got the idea of what I'm gonna do. I fix in my mind the impact, that's the impact fix. But I'm also fixing in my mind the loading and the, uh, the plane and all of these items, left wrist action, and what I'm gonna need to do to get that club to work the way I needed to hit the nicest, softest little shot right at the pin right here with a seven iron. That's what the waggle's all about. So as I'm trying to hit this shot for you here, I'm trying to get the waggle right for what I'm working on currently, my own game, on a full swing. I decided to go kind of three quarter because I haven't made a full swing in a while. It's a little cool out here. I hit the nice little 155 yard little seven iron shot. I know how to hit right now, <laughs> 35 years of playing golf. I hope as I see you along big channels of the internet, YouTube and buymanzell.com, wherever else this video winds up, I hope I can help you play the best golf you know how.